Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining me. My name's Didi. I am a tit smacker. Today, I'm a faggot in a flat. What can I say? Uh, I'm doing something a bit different today. I want, I want your help, ladies and gents. First of all, please do me a solid and just give this video a thumbs up. Don't think I've ever asked for you to do that at the beginning of the video. Just give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. It's all interaction, whatever. Uh, I'm going to go through a couple of comments off my latest post. I did my last video, the 12 month video. Um, no, I'm not sorry. No, nope, the video was, is it really that bad? Get your bush ready for summer. Manscaped lawnmower. <laughs> okay, whatever. So, I put a post up, a community post over there. And I think personally, I think what I said is, is valid, to be honest. Um, a lot of people didn't. This is why I want your input. Now, what I put, I think some people just took it out of context. Didn't I don't think they really understood what I meant. I put, it's funny how not one person slagging off the HTV industry has done so from a warehouse or from a supermarket. They all slag it off from the seat of a HTV. That tells you all you need to know, really. What I meant by that was, none of these HTV drivers have left the industry and then gone working in a warehouse or gone working in a supermarket. None of them. They're all still sat in a HTV slagging it off. Now, if someone had left the job and they was recording themselves in Asda saying, I've left HTV driving and gone stacking shelves in Asda or Lidl or whatever because the job is crap, then I'd be like, fair enough, you've actually done what you said you was going to do. You didn't like the job, so you've moved on. I cannot understand. I just, I can't fathom it in my tiny little fish brain. Why people sit in the seat of a truck and bitch and moan about it forever and a day. I just, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I'm confused by it. And like I said in my, is it that bad video? That video got no traction whatsoever. I, I don't even think it's at 20,000 views. Like I said, it's only news if it's negative. If anyone's doing anything positive about the industry, it just gets no recognition and it's just, it just gets shot down straight away because no one's interested in positivity. If, if I was sat here bitching for 20 minutes, I could probably get 250,000 views or whatever like the other dude has. But I'm not bitching because I'm passionate about this industry. I love it. I enjoy it. I think it's a great job. Um, I tried to explain how I have had jobs where I have had boatloads more responsibility than truck driving and I was paid a boatload less. I do not buy this. It's such a big, massive responsibility rubbish. I don't buy it whatsoever. When you see the speed that these FedEx drivers drive their Arctics at, sometimes I drive them quite quick as well. You know, you, you can get them around. I don't think it's... I don't think it's a humongous, massive responsibility, not like being a pharmacist or whatever. I mean, the pharmacist that I worked with, I think was on 38,000. That was a fully qualified pharmacist. Quite easy, could kill someone. And they were on 38 grand. I'm pretty sure I'm on more than that right now. 600, 650, 700 a week to take home. That's gotta be, that's gotta be going on for, what, 900 pound a week? Top line, easy. 9, 18, 27, 36, times 12. You don't work out wages like that, I know, but still. It's probably around about 38 grand, in it? Or maybe a bit more. That's for driving a truck. It's not that bad money, is it, really? Anyway, we're waffling, as we do. We'll get into it with uh, comment number one. I want you to listen to these comments, and I want you to respond, if you will. Tell me what you think. Um, one question I want to ask now, actually, before we do get into this, I know I'm waffling, waffling. Have you done any other job before, before truck driving? I think, from what I can gather, the people who feel the most sorry for themselves are people that have only ever done truck driving and believe, strongly believe, that it is the hardest job in the world. I don't think people that have... Well, you're going to see it now when I read this first comment out. I don't think people that have done other jobs then gone into hgv driving if they didn't like it i don't think they'd stick at it i think they'd just bugger off to be quite honest where i think people that have done it for 20 30 40 years it's all they've ever known and they do believe that it's difficult because all they've ever known is 15 hour days and dickhead transport managers 
and they've never ever had the balls to just say no actually I do need to find that comment thundering baby yeah that's why I've left my door open because it's all dark down yonder oh get in brilliant I need to find that comment actually I'm going to cut this bit out and clip back to me in a minute Right, I've just been distracted and my head's gone blank. blank. I'm sorry, I can't remember what I was looking for. I do apologise, that's just me all over, innit? Anyway, we'll get on to the first comment. Uh, and this is what I mean about, I don't think that the people that are mourning the most about it are people that have done anything else. I think all they've ever done is truck driving and they just despise it. Thomas Young. Honestly, I work on my feet 12 hours a day, six days a week on minimum wage and looking at getting into the industry. I can't believe these people... Do my job for a day and see what you think about HGV driving then. Yeah! This is the point that I'm getting at. This is what I completely agree with. I completely agree with. Try going scaffolding. Try labouring on a building site for one day. Just one day go and try labouring labouring on a building site for either a scaffolder or bricklayers or something like that. And then you'll know what hard work and being underpaid is actually like. Being a scaffolder, which just absolutely, it, it just absolutely destroys your body. Absolutely destroys you. And you end up walking lopsided like that because you're always carrying tube on your, on your shoulder. So because you're carrying like five, eight foot at a time, which are pretty damn heavy, you end up walking like that. And then when you, when you finish work, you carry on walking like that and it knackers your hip up and everything. It's absolutely horrible. Try doing something like that for a day, and then you tell me sitting on your ass for 12 hours a day, 13, 14, 15 hours a day, is hard work, and that you're underpaid when I was only on 110 quid a day. And that was when I was a part two scaffolder, actually, when I was on a labourer. When I was a labourer, I think I was only on, I can't remember, 80 quid a day, 90 quid a day, something like that, maybe. I can't even remember. But yeah, that's that's a graft. That's a job. Anything where you have to stand on your feet all day is just minging. So, anyway, that's what I think. Uh Number two, Carl, one, two, three, UK. I passed my test last month and compared to driving a Sprinter, it's so much better. I've had a 30% pay, pay rise Monday to Friday, seven till five, instead of various shifts, including weekends and a 45 minute break every shift, no matter what. What's not to like? To be fair, I imagine if you start at a company that try and push you and make you do things you shouldn't be doing, then it can seem a struggle, but you have to be firm right from the start. Hit the nail right on the head though. Right on the head. That was the comment I was looking for. I've just remembered what the comment was now. It was two guys. I'm going to remember it now. Someone posted a comment and said that the boss had taken the piss out of them. Now, he, these two lads, they were both drivers. Right, the, the signs were everywhere for this. They were both drivers. They'd been often offered 100 quid cash in hand. To drive a class two from Bradford down to London, one drop and then back again. Two drivers for that. And then his next paragraph was the boss has completely took the piss. He wanted a 15 hour shift. Uh, we ended up nighting out in this class two. He wouldn't, he didn't give me any extra money. Uh, blah, 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 blah. This is why the industry sucks. And I said, no, the signs were there that you was going to have the piss taken out of you right from the very start. I said, there is no one, no Harlier, going to send two drivers down to London for one drop and get you back in 12 hours. It is not going to happen. The signs were there straight away. I said, and as soon as you got to a 15-hour shift and he expected you to do three collections on the way back or whatever it was that the, the, he said he, they had to do, I said, I would have said, your truck's there at such and such a place. I don't know, Hilton Park. Maybe you made it that far back north. I don't know. Um, well you want to come up M6 would you anyway it doesn't matter um, your truck's there at Hilton Park it's staying there and I'm getting a taxi or a train home unless you put me another 125 quid in the bank end of story but he didn't he kept his mouth shut and did it why? why are you so afraid to stand up to your boss or a transport manager or a planner if he tells you to get chuffed get chuffed go and find a different job you need to stand up for yourself from the very start and I understand the problem is when you're first starting a job, I was exactly the same. I, I used to take out defected trucks from the very start because they just said, don't worry about it, just take it. I used to drive around when I first got on two, I won't say, 
when I first got onto my Arctics, I used to drive around at 53 ton because I was made to believe that it was okay. It's not okay. If you don't want to do it, say no. If they don't like it, tough. More people need to say no. They need to stand up and say, no, I'm not doing it. I do it at Hermes. I mean, to be fair, I cannot, I can't slag Hermes off. I recommend the job to anybody. The money's mint. The job's a piece of cake. If they ask me to do like a ridiculously long drive or a night out, I just say no. And I'm not a dick about it. I just say no, it's not what I want to do. I'm not here for that. I'm here for, I'm here for eight to 10 hour shifts. That's pretty much it. That's all I want. I don't need to be doing 12, 13, 14, 15 hour shifts anymore. I don't want to do them. I don't really enjoy them. I don't mind the odd one. You know, if they ask me as a favour, please, can you do such and such thing and we'll sort you an eight hour shift out tomorrow? But like, yeah, okay, no problems. Oh, is there any chance you can cover a night out? I'm really sorry, but can you just do a night out just this once? Yeah, okay. Hermes have been really good to me. They've looked after me. You know, I'm changing my shifts around here, there and everywhere. I'm going on days next week just for the crack of it. I just fancied a change, so I asked them if I could go on days. The answer was, yeah, no worries. Sorted. If they're good to me, I'll be good to them. It, 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 you know, it's give and take. But if you've got a planner that's... And I don't, I don't does it, and it drives me daft. And I know so many drivers that do it at WS. They slag the job off to death and then big the job up on, big the job up on social media. Oh, God, it drives me absolutely insane. Oh, I know drivers at WS that have been planning to leave since I started, and they're still there, and it's just like, why? What are you doing? Oh, crazy. But they'll get, they'll get like, forced to stay out on a Friday night, and it's like, no, just drop your trailer somewhere and solo it back. I finish on Friday. I'm doing Monday to Fridays. I'm not doing a night out on a Friday night. I'm not working into Saturday. I've got a family at home. I'm going home. You don't like it? Tough. Can't force you to stay out an extra night. That's going to make you resent the industry. It's going to make you resent everything. Because the last thing you want to do on a Friday night, when you've really been planning to go home and nailing your missus and seeing your kids, not in that order, is being forced to do a night out. It's obviously going to make you resent the industry, in it? Do you know what I'm saying? Start standing up for yourself. Start saying no. Not doing it. End of story. Whew. Didi's on one. Proper on one. I love the industry though. I love the HTV industry and it's just getting such a bad rap at the moment. Number three. A simple case of people don't appreciate what they've got until it's gone. I'm a new driver. I spent years working nights in a factory. Never again. That's from J-Man. It's very true. You really do not appreciate Oh, it's levering it down now. Do not appreciate how easy the HTV job itself actually is. So we're going to have a look outside that coin. Let's have a break from this monotony. Let's have a look what's going on. Watch me get struck in fod by lightning now. Oh, shit. It's absolutely whopping it down. Whew. Yeah, alright. Sorry about that. Uh. Right, so number four we're on to now. This is from Philip Roberts. I'm 39 this year. Had my class one since 21. That's 18 years. The industry has always been shit and continues to do so. My last 10 years have been spent in a class two delivering steel Monday to Friday. I've worked in all sorts from multi-drop store deliveries to bulk loads. The industry needs a huge shake-up and the public need to change their mindset of HTV drivers. We're treated like scum of the road. Get rid of the driver CPC, it's a joke and a waste of time. Surely safe and fuel efficient driving courses. Really? For drivers would be more beneficial. Also teach drivers advanced driving techniques in how to read the road ahead. You do that anyway, that's part of your normal driving lessons and test. Surely hands-on training has got to be better than sat in a classroom all day doing a course you did last year. Also, instead of the government increasing driver hours, which is already a potentially dangerous dangerous idea, how about they kick RDCs into touch and get drivers tipped and gone? ASAP instead of three hours later. How many wasted hours do we spend sat around waiting for other people when we could be back on the road getting stuff delivered? Where does one start? Oh. I don't think the driver CPC is a joke. Whether you do it, let me just turn the camera around a little bit. Whether you do it every year or not, I don't think it's a joke. I think it needs to be done. I think it needs to be fresh in drivers' minds. That's just my personal opinion. 
every single industry has an absolute boatload of health and safety absolute rubbish absolute nonsense it's just part and parcel of living in the 21st century are we in now oh lord um it's just part and parcel of life right now everything's gone health and safety absolutely mad safe and fuel efficient driving courses really you think sitting in a classroom is boring you want to try having a safed is it called safed s-a-f-e-d driving thing easing off and all that balls not for me that rubbish forget that um advanced driving techniques in how to read the road ahead like i said you already get that um but this is what i don't understand you know he, he said that it's scum of the road and the, the the drivers need to change the mindset of hdv uh, people need to change the mindset of hdv drivers but then says we should be tipped and gone back on the road asap so i mean it, it's just contradictory you, you don't want to be on the road because you get treated like scum but you want rdc's to be quicker i mean this is what makes the job a piece of cake in it that you get to sit on a bay for three hours i did it last night at middlewich i sat there for two and a half hours waiting for a trailer that i could see whatever i got paid two and a half hours i got paid what 45 quid for sitting there and doing absolutely nothing i watched something on netflix i think i watched a couple of episodes of big bang theory or something like that absolute doddle um yeah i wanted to get on for two o'clock i'm not gonna lie i wanted an eight hour shift because i did 13 hours on sunday but whatever i got paid for it do you know what I mean? And when I was on my 30... Jesus fucking Christ. Woo! That shaped me right up. Christ on a bike. I love thunder and lightning as well. Wow. Anyway, this is turning into an absolute catastrophe. Bloody hell fire. Um, but yeah, you know, he's still in the industry. 18 years he's been in the industry. And... You know, if you're treated, you think you're treated like scum of the earth, go and work in a friggin' little. And then you'll see how you get treated, man. It ain't, it ain't best anywhere. It's the same everywhere you go. Eric Peterson, I like you, Didi, I really do. I watch all your stuff all the time and enjoy it. But you've kind of answered everyone's fears about mass immigration. One minute we did them jobs you mentioned, the next people from other countries do. How can you not realise it's cheap labour which is replacing us from doing them jobs warehouse and driving? I've researched this and it's so obvious. It's no good saying the English won't do them with the wages abysmal. Most of the time, like you even said, if, if you lived further north like me, you would be on £12 an hour at Hermes, so don't think everyone's on a good thing. Just to clarify, I'm an ADR tanker driver on 11 50 an hour, £12.80 odd after 40 hours. Make a mistake in one of these pal with what I carry and you're finished. Along with everyone around you, it's as simple as leaving a valve open, big responsibility. The industry does need to change and the government needs to start a massive scheme to get young English lad drivers lorries. Young English lads driving lorries instead of importing cheap foreigners which stops us from getting meaningful wage rises. Come on DD, do more research into it and you will see what's going on. Keep the vids though, I do enjoy you rambling on a bit like me here. Again, a very simple way out, blame immigration. Very simple way of doing it. I, just, I don't, I don't even know what to say. I, I, I just, I don't even know how to respond to that. Um, ADR tanker driver on eleven, eleven pound fifty an hour or twelve pound eighty odd. He's just said you would be on twelve pound an hour at Hermes, and he's quite happy doing an ADR tanker with loads of responsibility for eleven pound fifty an hour. Why? Why? The only thing I can think of, ego. So that he can actually say, I'm a tanker driver, I drive explosive petrol with massive amounts of responsibility. All I need to do is leave a valve open and everybody's dead. Such a high responsibility, man. Yeah! That's the only thing I can think of. Can't think of any other reason why you would look at another job that's higher paid than yours and easier and simple and not do it. I, I can't say it. The only thing I can put it down to is ego. I, I, tell me if I'm wrong. Again, I want your input. You know, this is just me just blurting out. But, please, it's like, how many of you drivers, if you're still watching this, how many of you drivers, if you got offered to go on to Class 2, if you got offered an extra £2 an hour to move down to Class 2, would you do it? So, if you was working for Hermes, let's say, and you was trunking like me, and you got offered £18 an hour, if you got offered a Class 2 job, exactly the same, but you was driving a Class 2, a 12-tonner, 
or maybe seven, seven and a half tonner. If you was driving a seven and a half tonner, but you got offered £20 an hour, would you take it? Or would your ego get in the way and be like, no, I like driving bendy wagons. Um, I actually fell out with a truck vlogger about this because he was an absolute egomaniac. He took the piss out of everybody that drove a class two because his wagon bends in the middle. And I'm like, really? You go where the money is. I jumped at a class two. If you follow me on Instagram, you'd know, at DD2012. Um, I jumped at the opportunity to drive a class two last week. Jumped at it, I was like, yeah, damn right. Come out and ask. Does anyone want to drive it? And everyone went, no, 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 no. It's exactly the same money. And it's easier. So, why not? I jumped at it. Did a class two to John Castro and back. Loved it. Brilliant. Fantastic. I love the industry. I do any kind of job. I ain't asked. If I could got if I could get offered two pounds an hour extra to drive a class two, I'd do it. Happy days. Would you? Let me know. Um yeah, as for this immigration thing, I I just don't get it. I don't get the immigration thing. Um the warehouse. The warehouses, every warehouse I've been to, every single one, there isn't one warehouse I've not been to where the majority of people that are stood to are sorting parcels out are foreigners. It's very rare, especially on nights, to come across a set of English lads. I'm not bothered about that. I could not care less. I don't care who I talk to. Could not care less. But they come over and they graft. They work. They keep the mouth shut. They do the job. English people moan bitch and moan about everything on to topic number six no work on i'd have been straight in the transport office demanding another set of keys <laughs> 26 thumbs up why you're a man you're a man are you really asked about work on that bad get on with it it's a freaking job it blows cold air as soon as you got a motorway with your window down you're done I could have gone into the office and caused a big fuss. You give me crap trucks. It's not even got air con. What kind of company is this? Run, 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 run. This is absolutely pathetic. It's a defective truck. It's aware. I'm not doing it. There's your keys. Stick your job. Run, run, run. I hate the HGV industry. And you transport manager, an absolute wanker. Run, 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 run. Why? I'm not asked about a bit of fucking cold air being blown on me. Get on with it. Crack on. It's not worth causing a fuss over. Get in your fucking truck. Drive it to wherever you need to go. Just smile. Stick some tunes on. Get going. Get gone. This is, that's what I mean. No work on. I'd have been straight in transport office giving it the big eye on. I'm not slagging him off. You know what I mean? But this is the kind of... This is what we've kind of been... This is what you kind of expect right now. It's just... I just... I just... Sorry. I, I apologise. I, yeah, I, am, I am being a bit of a... A bit of a willy bob. But I just... I can't get it. I don't get it. Anyway... John Sammons, hey up Didi, hope you're well, love your vlogs and I've been following you from day one but I don't necessarily agree with, well, with a lot of what you've said. Firstly, 16 to 17 pound an hour is not really that good for the responsibility you have driving 44 ton at 56 mile an hour. I was a pharmacist technician at probably on about 8 pound an hour. I was a scaffolder, if you work it out, probably on about 10 pound an hour. I'm driving a fecking box truck with two ton of parcels on back. For 16, 17 pound an hour, 20, 21 pound an hour or near or thereabouts on a Sunday. I don't see the massive amounts of responsibility. It still stops like a car. Nothing's going to fall off the back. Yeah, long loads, wide loads, extended loads. I think being paid 12 pound 50 at WS was a piece, of, was a joke. But whatever. Do you know what I mean? I left, got something else, got more money, easier job. Didn't have to sleep out all, all week. That's what everyone should do. You know what I mean? If if like everyone, well, it's it's obviously happened because places like Eddie Storbart's, DHL, WS, they've all put the wages through the roof. I mean, WS are offering two thousand four hundred pound now a year just to stay there, just to turn up at work. What does that tell you about the company? Don't tell you about a driver shortage. It tells you about a company. It tells you that they treat you that bad that they actually need to pay you to come to work. They need to pay you just to turn up. That again, that's just my opinion, and I know the WS lot will probably get mad at that, but it's true. Um, if you call a plumber out or a sparky, you're looking at 40 to 50 pound an hour minimum. Yes, they are skilled. Yes, it's eight and a half thousand pound to do an electrician's course that took, that would take, is it two or three years? Sparkies will let me know, but I did want to go into being an electrician. And when I saw the cost of the course, eight and a half grand and having to go to college and all that stuff, I said, nope, can't afford it. Can't afford eight and a half grand. I'm not doing it. HGV driving it is. HGV driving, two and a half grand, two week. You earn two and a half grand back in two months. 
less than two months. It's worth it, in my personal opinion. I think selling industry short by saying anybody can do it and it's easy. It's not! It is easy. It's a piece of piss. It's an absolute doddle. The hardest part of the job is reversing it on a beer. That is the hardest part. That attitude is the reason transport managers are such pricks along with the spotty little teenagers who reckon they are transport managers. Wow. No, the reason transport managers are pricks is because men are terrified of saying no to them. So they do it. And then the transport managers get entitled and think, well, anyone will do it. So anyone that comes through the, go the door gets told to do it. Uh, one of my last weeks at WS, I think I may have explained this, um, they very rarely sent me to London town centre very rarely and if they did usually it was on a friday because all the v8 boys and all the, all the boys that got looked after they used to all come back north on a friday so they could get a nice dinner time finish whereas dickheads like me that used to just say yeah you just get shoved in um thingy magic you just get shoved uh, down in london or somewhere down south to make it very difficult to get back um i told them when i first started i had a court order to have my kids court order i was looking at it yesterday um i have to pick the kids up from school on a friday that went out the window as soon as i started at ws not interested couldn't care less it was an actual is it a law abiding contract or whatever they didn't give a shit whatever don't matter to them all they're interested in is getting a job done one of the last fridays down there they sent me to london with a load oh don't worry mate straight in straight out not a problem you'll be back up right okay make sure i am because i've got my kids this weekend they pick them up from school yeah you will don't worry Gets onto site at about 7 o'clock. I was one at first though. Uh, sat underneath a crane for 7 hours. 7 hours. I weren't allowed to get out the truck. I weren't allowed to move because there was a crane's overhead. Weren't allowed to do anything. Didn't have no food. Didn't have no milk. Didn't have no water left. All I had was a bottle of piss. That was it. And I kept falling up every half an hour. I'm stuck here. I'm not going to get back. I'm stuck here. I'm not going to get back. Stuck here. Not going to get back. Just sit there. Just sit there. Just sit there. Don't worry. Just sit there. Don't worry. Just sit there. I'm like, you're taking the piss now. I ain't going to get back. Um, obviously because I'd done 6 hours on break 7 hours on break I managed to get a split rest in so I got a 15 hour shift on my Friday in the end I turned around and said I'm going to strap this load up take it back to rugby and I'm going home and I still had probably about a quarter of a load left to be unloaded and I went to rugby and so loaded it back up because I needed to get home for my kids this is what happens when people don't say no this is what happens when people are quite happy to have a wife and kid at home but yet, they live in the truck all weekend and do a full weekend out for 25 quid a day. It's stupid. People need to start to learn to say no. Simple as that. If you're a driver and you get the piss taken out and you're, and you're mourn about it 24 seven because the transport manager's taking the piss, you're a driver, you know how far it is to such and such a place, you know how far it is back from such and such a place. If you don't think you're gonna do it, say no. Don't say yeah, then get stuck out and then bitch about it. Say no, not doing it. Find someone else that wants to do a Saturday, because I'm not doing it. Simple as that. Yes, you can earn decent money, but who wants to work 100, power, 100 hours a week to afford to live? What do you class as decent money? What do you class as being affording to live? I do. I'll, I'll, I'll be very generous. I'll do between, I do between 8 and 12 hours a night. Very rarely 12 I do eight, between 8 and 11, let's say that. Let's say 8 and 11 hours a night. That's going up to 55 hours a week. And I get paid over £600 a week. Take home. 55 hours a week is not a massive amount of hours. And it's good money. Tell me where I'm... Tell me I'm wrong. Do you know, if, if you're not happy working in a job that's 10, 11, 12, £13 an hour, go and find something else. DPD are offering £26 an hour. All you do is hook up to a trailer, drive somewhere, sit there while the trailer gets loaded. You don't even swap it and then drive back. £26 an hour they're offering. And you sat in your truck, mourning at being on £13 an hour, like that reverend guy. You know, that, that video, again, it's just absolutely blown my mind why he's still being a truck driver. Leave. Go and do something else. Go and train yourself up to be a joiner or a plumber or an electrician. Or go and work in Lidl. Just do something. What is the point in doing a career that you absolutely despise? I cannot get it into my thick skull. I cannot understand why you'd sit there and just slag it off all the time. And then the people go, 
because I like driving. But you hate other drivers that are on the road. You get treated like the scum of the earth. There's no respect from anyone on the road. Cars cut you up. Cars pull in front of you. So how, how do you love driving? That's never going to change. And even on nights, there's roadworks and diversions everywhere. It took me five and a half hours to get home from Bridgewater the other night. It took me three hours and 45 minutes to get there. Five and a half to get back because they'd shut three junctions on the M5. That is just as annoying, if not worse than traffic. It blows my mind. Please, man. Please. If you hate the job, please go and find something else. Go and do something else. Just, 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 just how miserable is your life going to be if you're living it in a sardine tin and absolutely hating every single minute of it? Your life is going to be so miserable. Oh, how depressed are you going to be? How angry and bitter are you going to be if you're doing 100 hours a week and you're hating every single hour of it? Would it not be better to take a little tiny pay cut and stop tramping, go and work in a shop and then go to the gym and start lifting and then start having shitloads of sex? Wouldn't that be better? than living in a truck and pulling yourself off to a crusty sock. Come on. It's common sense. What is wrong with you people? If you hate it that bad, leave. My Lord. Now, the last comment. Easy. Easy. Original individual. Typical tosser. Lazy person's job. No wonder you're all overweight. Do I look overweight to you, son? Come on. I think I look pretty good, to be fair. I, uh, this is the best I've ever looked. In my entire life, even when I was prepping for the Mr. Bolton, I didn't look this good. Now, I look mint and I work nights. I think anyway. Women love my body. I love it. That's an, a cargo train. The uh, witness port's just over yonder. No, it's not. It's a boat. I'm lying. Do you want to see a boat? <laughs> oh, it's time. Oh, so a flash of lightning there. MSC Buffalo from Manchester. Very cool. Very cool. Let's uh let's have a quick let's have a quick gander, shall we? Stuff it. Stuff yous. I don't even care. Lazy and overweight. <laughs> get in, get in, lad. Of course we're. Whatever. My name's Didi. I'm a faggot in a flap. I'm a dickhead. I talk my mind. I try and talk sense. If you don't like it, I do. A, I don't apologise. Actually, it's tough shit. If you don't like it, whatever. I love the industry. I love HTV driving. It's what I'm passionate about. It's what I've always wanted to do, and I love it. And I'm going to defend it, whether you like it or not. If you don't like me defending it then please unsubscribe and leave. If you do like my views and opinion, opinions, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, follow me on Instagram, do whatever you want, it's your life. Thank you so much for watching, take care of yourselves. If you don't like it, please leave. Thanks a lot, see you later. To do this, I want you, you lot, your, you guys and girls, you guys and girls, yes, I want your input. I'm going to read out some of these comments. Uh, I think I've just said that. <laughs> Fucking hell, this is well harder than doing a truck vlog. Jesus Christ. <sighs> Dead good at truck vlogs. Trying to touch shit while I'm sat down. Not happening. Right.